Thank you. Um, you can call me Chris Torella. It's okay. I will respond to that. Um, so I don't know if you remember the uh, default uh, WordPress tagline, just another WordPress site. So this kind of is just another REST API talk. Um, but I thought that sounded lame, so it's not just another <laughs> REST API talk. I am Kristen Simons, um, at Christarella on Twitter, the real Christarella on Instagram, because I held out and then I lost my name. Um, I am a happiness engineer working for Automatic, mainly supporting WordPress.com. Yes, thank you. There are a few automaticians here this weekend. It's great. Um, I am one of two automaticians currently living in Sydney. Uh, sadly, you can't see the other one's avatar. It's like stuck behind me there. But <laughs> um, so uh, just an overview of uh, where we're going today. So I'm going to talk a bit about what a, a REST API is. So WordPress isn't the only thing that has a REST API. Uh, it's a uh, a more specific thing. Um, and then what is the WordPress REST API? A bit of history about it, who is currently using it, um, how you can use it, um, some ideas uh, and a couple of examples. So what is a REST API? Uh, it's not about resting or napping or anything like that. Um, an API is an application programming interface. Um, so it's a way for different applications, uh, different websites to talk to each other. Um, it, the phrase uh, REST was coined by Roy, Roy Fielding in his t dissertation in 2000. It stands for representational state transfer. Um, so basically you've got a text representation of something, um, some information, um, and uh, you can transfer that. Um, you can get the information, you can manipulate, manipulate the information um, through the API. So uh, what makes a API RESTful as opposed to not RESTful are six specific things. Uh, one is that it needs to be stateless. Um, so that kind of means that it doesn't matter if it's your first request or your fifth request, um, the API doesn't care. Um, it also uh, doesn't rely on previous information. Um, so an example of a not stateless task is like a form or a survey where you, uh, you know, you have to go through each page in turn. Um, the statelessness of the REST API is, means that you don't do that. Um, you send all the information in one go and you get information back. Um, it should be cacheable. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, you guys don't need to worry about that. Ryan needs to worry about that when he's making the API. Um, it should have a uniform interface. Um, so that means that a URI or a URL uh, identifies the thing, the resource that you uh, want to get or perform an action on. Um, and uh, generally, the operation that you want to perform should be implicit in the URL, but as you'll see later, um, it might not be. So in this uh, example, um, you've got your website, um, and then delete is the method or the operation. Um, product is the sort of the type, product coffee is the type of resource, um, but sometimes your method will go um, in another part of your code. Um, so the REST a REST API um, should have a separation of client and server. So um, the server doesn't really care uh, who the client is, um, and the client doesn't need to uh, store information. Uh, that's kind of s similar to the statelessness uh, in that um, it doesn't matter if the client has made 10 or 20 requests. Um, it should be layered, so, or it should be able to be layered, so it doesn't matter if 
um, you're accessing the original source of the information. Um, you could be accessing through an intermediary server. Um, so it could be a CDN or something like your uh, information could be stored uh, multiple levels down or multiple locations um, and uh, the API doesn't care about that. Um, and the response, uh, this one's kind of optional, um, but be in a hypermedia format. Um, so hypermedia, um, meaning that it should um, have a sort of a semantic sense of what the information is within it. Um, so XML is a hypermedia format because um, it conveys the meaning of the information within it. Um, JSON is the format that the, a lot of REST APIs uh, return and it is sometimes hypermedia. So it's up to the author of the API to make the JSON that's returned uh, make sense. So instead of saying, here's my resource, and then just saying, and value one is blah, and value two is something else, you would say, here's my resource, and its ID is, and its link is, um, so you wouldn't assign, you know, actual value one because that doesn't convey any meaning. So that's what uh, makes an API RESTful. What is the WordPress REST API? Um, so WordPress has lots of APIs, or like not heaps, but it has multiple. Um, so it has the theme API and the plugin API, um, but none of those are RESTful. Um, they're all dependent on uh, you interacting with them via PHP. So I like the way that um, Topher de Rossia said it. Um, the rest, the WordPress REST API immediately turns your website into an application that can serve data to any kind of application or language. So the WordPress REST API breaks down barriers between languages um, and servers to uh, provide information from one WordPress installation uh, to another or to uh, change your WordPress, the information stored in your WordPress install from another location. Um, it's a bit of a timeline of uh, how the WordPress REST API came about. Um, so in, back in 2009, uh, this isn't exactly or necessarily part of the current REST APIs process, but it's just interesting that in 2009, um, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, um, they wanted to use WordPress uh, to manage their website content, but they wanted to build a front end in Ruby, uh, each to their own. Um, so they made a, a JSON API plugin for um, developing their website. Um, so that's not, I don't believe that's what actually evolved into the current REST API, but back then um, somebody was thinking that, hey, it'd be good if WordPress had um, an API that output information in JSON. Um, so then in 2013, um, Ryan McHugh, who's here this weekend, um, he committed the first code in GitHub for uh, the WordPress REST API. And then he continued working on that um, as a Google Summer of Code project. Uh, in 2014, the first uh, version of the WordPress REST API was done. Um, it was quite stable and robust, but there were a bunch of um, things preventing it from being included in the WordPress core, um, such as it not having its own internal API and being difficult to extend. Um, but it was uh, good for uh, getting and manipulating posts and pages, media um, terms, so taxonomies and users. Um, so then in uh, 2015, um, version two was started. Um, so the main people working on that uh, were Ryan and Rachel, Joe and Daniel, and they've um, been the main contributors to 
through WordPress REST API. Um, they added schemas, um, which are essentially like documentation within the API, um, but they can also be used for other things like validating um, information uh, that you're trying to post to your site. Um, and then later uh, in the beta one, a controller class um, was added, which uh, the controller class can be extended. So that's how you add um, add on to the REST API um, to make custom get get custom information back. Um, so if you say for WooCommerce, they would have um, their they would extend the controller to add products to the REST API so that you can not only get posts and pages, but products too. Um, and then the server uh, was added, which knows about all of the endpoints that have been added. So an endpoint is um, essentially uh, the end part of the URL. That's uh, how you get how you tell it what information that you want. Uh, we'll see more of that later. And uh, in, so 2015, uh, development continued and through 2016, and finally in December uh, 2016, the API was merged into core. Uh, so that was very exciting. Oh, in 2015, the infrastructure was merged in, um, which meant that uh, it was getting ready to use it, but there weren't actually any endpoints. So they still needed to be required a plugin to, to use them. Um, but now the full API is integrated. So it was very cool. So who is using it? Um, a bunch of plugins uh, are already using it. Um, some of them previously required the REST API plugin to be enabled, but now they don't. Um, so Search WP is a plugin that uh, fetches the information from your website onto their servers and processes it, um, indexes it, uh, makes it a way better <coughs> search, uh, search information than WordPress has by default. WordPress search uh, mainly just looks at the content and the title. Um, so uh, yeah, Search WP. Um, Oh, and then, so WordPress search returns the newest post first or the newest page first, um, whereas search WP uh, has relevance and all of that sort of thing in it. Uh, Tabulate is another plugin. It's not dependent on the API, but it uses it for um, enhanced navigation. So previously, if you optionally installed the REST API plugin, then Tabulate would enhance its navigation. Um, WooCommerce is uh, fully integrated with the API since version, version 2.6, so that's pretty cool. Um, Easy Digital Downloads, another um, e-commerce plugin, actually has its own REST API, um, but maybe they will port over to the uh, WordPress REST API, who knows. And then um, Advanced Custom Fields can also integrate. Um, with an extra plugin. Um, there are a bunch of websites that are already using the REST API. So um, we've got US2 uh, who make um, the game Monument Valley and they're a, um, a design development agency um, for games and such. Uh, I believe they're using React to power their site on the front end. Um, Modern Tribe are also using React to power the front end of their site. Um, also Guggenheim is um, yeah, using the REST API to power some of their site. Um, there's also custom uh, admin interfaces being built. Um, so on WordPress.com, um, we're using what's, what we call Calypso. Um, and it's built with React, uh, and it's a totally new admin interface, um, different to your regular WP admin. Um, and Happy Tables uh, is a um, app for restaurants, um, and it is 
using the REST API also. Um, it's being used in mobile applications. So the main one is the official uh, WordPress mobile app. Um, but uh, Joe started to write um, Vienna using React Native. Uh, it's not anywhere near done, but if you are interested in being involved with developing a mobile app um, for WordPress, then um, that's a really good place to start. Um, it also has some uh, code um, relating to, well, it's a good example of using the REST API with React Native if you're interested in building your um, own apps for that. Okay, so how do you use it? The first step is that you're going to need to find um, the uniform resource location. So there's a discovery URL that is now in the head of your WordPress site. So if you look at the HTML of your site, uh, you'll find it there. Um, but generally, it's just your domain slash WP dash JSON. Um, and then you need to construct the URL with the uh, endpoint that you want. So to find the resource that you are looking for. Um, so most of the or all of the um, built-in or default endpoints um, are located at WP slash V2 and then the one you're looking for. So posts, pages, um, taxonomies, um, I'll show you them later. Uh, and then so once if you say get that URL, it's going to return a JSON response with your posts and then you can use that information however you like. So this is an example response. Um, so there's all, you can also use query strings um, or provide uh, more information in JSON format in your request. Um, so, and you can also just put these URLs in your browser if you want to see the JSON that's returned. Um, so this is an example of me searching for CSS using the REST API uh, on my website. So you can see that um, the, this is the first part of the response um, and the first post you can see ID, date, um, link, title. Uh, so that's returned. Um, some examples of what you could do with the REST API. Um, so you could suggest search terms for your visitors. So they start typing in a search box um, and you could have a script that like starts searching the site already for likely ends of their searches, kind of like what Google does. Um, you could uh, use pagination. Um, so you could uh, get the next set of uh, posts without having to reload the page. Um, you could do an archive or portfolio filter. So you could have an archive page and like, you know, just have buttons that say click on the year or click on the category and show those posts without having to reload the page. Um, you can pretty much replace your admin dash ajax.php tasks with the REST API. Um, so yeah, if you're writing plugins that use admin Ajax, you can stop because admin Ajax is kind of slow and resource intensive. Um, so uh, those are things on your site, uh, things that you can do in other applications. You could search a site from anywhere. Um, so I use this to streamline my customer support workflow. Um, so I will show you my um, search script that I wrote uh, in Alfred to be able to um, search our documentation and provide a link to a user really quickly. Uh, in theory, you could uh, make a quick post tool to your site. So I was thinking of writing um, another script to like, if I have an idea for a post, just uh, real quickly type in the title or the or a, a short description and it would create a draft on my site. Um, 
You can pass information into um, other APIs in whatever other language you need. Um, so stuff you could do is like integrate signups on your website with um, Salesforce or MailChimp or something like that. Um, you could display real-time sales data or um, real-time any data from your website if you had an event. So say you, uh, you know, you're having a fundraiser um, and you were using uh, WooCommerce or something like that to uh, take donations. You could have on your screen the like real-time raising money. So. Uh, this is um, one example uh, that I am working on uh, using AngularJS um, and uh, what I'm doing is uh, building a website so people can order drinks at my house. Um, that might sound weird but I have many many varieties of tea and I thought how awesome would it be if somebody can pull up on their phone um, my tea menu and order tea and then it could come like the order could come directly to my phone and that would be awesome fun. Uh, so this is the main part of the code that uh, is using the REST API. Um, so I'm basically, so I'm using the Angular, the Angular method HTTP. Um, I am getting, so uh, fetching information. Um, you can use uh, post to post information, but then you need to authenticate. So um, you need to basically log in to your site. Uh, there's various authentication methods. Um, yep, so I am getting, this is the development uh, URL of my website. Uh, getting posts. I've put in per page 100. That's the maximum that you can fetch at a time. Uh, and I want to get all of them. And I want to order by title because ordering by date makes no sense with T. Um, and then this adds all of the returned data to a variable called drinks. And I'll show you how it works. If I can figure out, is this one on? Hello? Yeah. Uh, if I can figure out how to get out, out of here and show you my browser. Nope. There we go. Whoopsies. Okay, so this is very much a work in progress. Um, it's ugly and uh, there are some formatting issues that I am yet to address, but, um, but basically uh, I have the list of the drinks that are available at my house. Um, if somebody wants, I don't have any hot chocolate listed right now. Um, I only have one kind of coffee right now but I have tea, so if you want tea, uh, you can filter if you want a black tea or a green tea, or maybe you are feeling like something minty, um, organic peppermint sounds good. You can tap to get more information, um, which is still a work in progress, and then you can add that drink to your order. Uh, if you're ordering for multiple people, oh, apparently no chai, uh, somebody, white with rose, sounds very floral. Uh, and then, yeah, you pop in your name and order. Um, so all of this information, um, these are all posts in uh, a WordPress install. Um, these are all custom taxonomies. So these ones are tags, these ones are cat, uh, categories. These are a custom taxonomy for variety um, and they're all fetched um, with code like the one that I just showed you. I will put these this on GitHub when it's 
uh, more refined <laughs> and has less errors. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can uh, see the example if you want to. Where's my mouse? Cool. <coughs> Excellent. Okay. And so my search from anywhere um, is currently a script uh, workflow in Alfred. Um, if you're not familiar with Alfred, it is like an app launcher for the Mac, but way more than an app launcher. It's a um, custom search engine. Um, you can like do calculations in it. Um, so you just have a short code, you pull it up and it does magic things. So um, building a workflow in Alfred uh, is like just dragging and dropping and connecting um, operations together. Uh, so in Alfred, if I type SP, um, and then something after that, it is going to run my script and then I can open the URL for that gets returned or I can um, press shift to just copy that URL to my clipboard. Uh, here is the code. Oh, that's not very visible. Sorry about that. Um, I'll definitely make this available as well, um, but basically my REST API URL is up there. I've got a bunch of like order by um, title, uh, per get a certain number of results per page, um, and my search term. And then, um, so this is a PHP script, but you could do it in any language that you're familiar with. Um, Python is, seems like a popular choice, but I don't know how to write that. Um, so curl uh, fetches the URL, and then this is XML that Alfred uses to list the results. Uh, so I'll show you how that works. Uh, I think I'm actually going to need to unmirror for this. Hang on a sec. Or oh, mirror. Okay, so uh, that's my Alfred shortcut is just um, control space and I pull it up. And so if I type uh, SP, uh, it has a bunch of options so I could launch any of these other apps if I wanted to but what I actually want to do is search so I'm going to search for custom menu and it is um, searching our support site on wordpress.com um, in real time and returning that stuff uh, through the REST API um, and yeah as I said I can open the page well, that's a bit unfortunate. No, it's like the crazy whatever I did with the browser. Damn it. Did it again. You all click. That's the one that I wanted. Um, let's search for something. Else. Oh, we'll search for menus again because menus are cool. Woohoo! And then if I just wanted to copy something like telling something about galleries. I don't need to open the page because I already know what it says, but I can just copy that by pressing shift and enter. Um, so yeah, if there's something that you uh, repeatedly do interacting with a WordPress site uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you can 
uh, make a custom script in Alfred, or you could run that. You could run that from anywhere. Um, you'd run it from the command line if you like. Okay, um, that is the couple of images that I uh, Creative Commons images that I took, and thanks. Are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs>